there is a huge usefulness for tau therapeutics particularly in PSP. Um, like I said, there's a, there's a clear correlation between presentation and pathology in the brain. And so, therefore, I think that would be uh, exceptionally useful for drug companies to, to bear in mind when they're trying to work out whether their drug will work on tau per se before they then put it into a more complicated patho pathological mix like Alzheimer's disease where there may be more than one pathology that's causing the symptoms. So I think there's uh, usefulness for things like uh, uh, conditions like progressive supranuclear palsy. I think uh, my own opinion is that uh, we should be looking for small effects from multiple strategies. So, for example, if we could turn off or limit the production of tau protein, uh, therefore uh, limiting the amount of spread or the limiting amount of, the, of, of substrate there that can be changed in a prion-like hypothesis, um, from normal tau to abnormal tau. And at the same time, we can have a monoclonal antibody, which might also um, pro um, uh, provide some slowing down of spread of tau, or abnormal tau from cell to cell, then those two strategies combined might actually have a, a large effect on the disease as opposed to each strategy on its own. Um, that would obviously take a bit of a joined up uh, approach and perhaps slightly bigger studies, but I think that might be quite useful. Um, I think other than that, uh, uh, we, I think maybe more targeted, um, approaches for tau. So at the moment we're looking at tau per se, uh, with monoclonal antibodies, um, or, uh, genetic studies, but actually maybe something that's more targeted to, uh, particular shapes of tau or isoforms of tau, um, which are linked to certain diseases. And that would require more basic science research, but also more, um, drug company research looking at how we can target a particular isoform of tau in particular.